Not only did I touch a Fuji X-H2S with the 150 to 600, I stole the files and we got them. We got them. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So Vistec was having a little Fuji event where you could test and hold and record on a Fuji X-H2S. So we got a bunch of comparisons. I brought my X-T4 with the 100 to 400, did a couple little side-by-sides. Some things have been noticed. Now, before we get into this footage, just know that this is a pre-production firmware. I asked him if he had the new fancy one that fixed everything that the Fuji Rumors guy talked about, and he said, yes, we have that. That is true. It does fix everything. Sorry, we don't have it in this camera, though. So, we're just on ghetto firmware. It hurts. So, first thing I noticed, here we are, Fuji X-H2S with the 150 to 600, and the autofocus, it was... It was latched onto his eye, but it looked like it was out of focus. And now that I see the footage, as he walks towards the camera, it's just like constantly drifting in and out. I mean, not the easiest shot for Fuji. It's a backlit kind of brightness, but we're in F-Log 2. It looks magical when he is in focus, though. Fuji magic is still upon our hearts. It's just, it drifts quite a bit like a race car would out of his lane as I spy on other people in the store. Oh, he noticed me. Oh, okay, sorry, I wasn't filming you. I promise, I was filming that GoPro TV thing. Zooming in on the GoPro logo at 600 mil now. I was at 150 before. We see the tightness. We see the tightness of that crop. Holding that lens, it's interesting. I have some thoughts. One, I weighed it, 1857 grams with the hood and no caps, rear or front. That's how you would use it in the field. It was like 1605, we promised. No, uh, 250 plus and two. The zoom ring feels good like the Sony 200 to 600, nice and smooth and easy. And the manual focus, we'll get to the manual focus. There was some quirks on it, but it was smooth to the touch. If you were blind, you would notice it was smooth until you saw your footage. Now, I'll be honest with you. I don't remember what I even shot this in, if it was manual focus or not because there was so much going on. There was one camera to test, a bunch of people in line, so I was like panicking, trying to test certain things. We got a bunch of cool stuff, but this, I don't remember if it was manual focus or autofocus. I got all the other clips labeled, but that one is beyond me. You can't like see in a data file if it was manual focus or not. So I don't know, I did both and I don't remember a damn thing. I did a bunch of side-by-side, -side, so Fuji X-H2S, 150 to 600, 4K 120p on your left. In F-Log 2, I messed up my X-T4, I'm sorry, I'm in standard, not even F-Log, but I do switch into F-Log later. But this is just 4K 60p versus 4K 120, and the different lenses. You can see how much tighter it is, that 600 versus 400, and it looks sharp, it looks really sharp and nice. Now here's where things fall apart pretty hard in HD 240p. I was surprised at how bad it looked. I don't know if it's just, there's something with that noise pattern, man. It just ain't right. Like it was so soft. I have some footage of me running through the shop for some reason, and it's just really bad. It's so much worse than the 4K 120p, and I worried about that because it's now a 38% crop instead of the Fuji X-T4 is 29%. And I was hoping that they did that to super sample it or something. No, it's just so bad. Like it's all they could do is that 38% crop. And this is why I hope they fix that because that's devastating. Here's just 4K 60 on both with the different lenses, but I'll switch the lenses to do some equal stuff. If you're curious about that zoom lens, I was zooming in and watching the aperture change. So once you get to 200, it switches to 6.4 from 5.6. There's nothing in between. And then 350, it goes to 7.1. And then almost all the way to 600, it's 7.1 until like 580-ish, it goes to Tony 8. So at 400 mil, it's Tony 7.1 versus the 100 to 400. That's what you would have. There's slight more tone on the 100 to 400. I can't tell which was sharper because the files are so hard to edit. I didn't look at what I was recording in. That was my first mistake because it was H265, 10 bit, 422, 720 megabits per second, like the highest you could get. 
And these are like Canon files. They're so hard to edit. And the ProRes, you can't do 4K 120p. Oh man, it's not looking good, Fooch. Now here's each camera with the same 100 to 400 lens. And there we have that. I might have been in like digital stave or something on that X-T4. Who knows what happened? But we got some, we'll go to the vlog test. One more clip. The X-H2S with the 150 to 600 versus the same camera, 100 to 400 at 400 mil. So everything's equal. Just the lenses are different. And this is the result. I can't even see this file playing back. I, I don't know what I'm seeing. I feel like maybe the 100 to 400 is sharper, but barely, just slight more ton. And I don't know what I see. All right, here's a little vlog clip in the store, X-T4 and then the X-H2S with the same lens, 18 mil 1.4. All right, little vlog and test, Fuji X-T4, lots of weird lighting. 18 mil 1.4, how's that stabe? We're gonna test the autofocus here. Every time I turn my head, it seems to lose me. And then we'll do the X-H2S. Wow. Huh? How's that lighting? That's some lighting for you. That's not too heavy. That might be your lens. I was thinking the 33 mil. We've tested it. It's weird. I'm working. I'm working at Vistec. I'm behind the counter. Oh, that is not allowed. So this is a nice little look. It's kind of heavy, but not really. Too much Tony for sure. You should be like Tony 4, let's be real. This is what you should be doing, 4.5. No, this is not full frame, 2.8. Abandon that whole thing, 1.8. Okay, Fuji X-H2S now. Huh? Same run around the store, interesting lighting there. Are we gonna lose the autofocus? Is the IBIS improved? If I just turn around, we still good? Back of the head vlogging? I do it. I've done it. How's the stabilization? Oh man. I don't know, man. I don't know that I'm sold. It still feels like a Fuji camera with a lot of the flaws. It's not a Sony, that's for sure. Don't say that out loud. Is the F-Log 2 noticeably more cinematic? I think it is. It's heavy. The grip feels nice. I don't mind it. I don't mind that grip. Oh, that was a shake. That's on me. I did this. More dynamic range kept. There better be. There better be. I won't know until I render the video fully, but you're seeing probably the X-H2S looks nicer. It just has a more dynamic range. If they can work out all the quirks, it still autofocuses better than the X-T4, that's for sure. Here's a side-by-side. I did manage to test the 50 mil one, Tony one, and I did it on both cameras, but ah, for some reason I was stopped down to 5.6 on the X-H2 and it was so much better. I was like, wow, finally it's working right. And I'm a moron, but that's what we got. But on the X-T4, like it would not see me after that. After I left the scene, it just did not. There was nothing. This is embarrassing, Fuji. It's all me in that frame. I am 97% of the frame. It saw nothing. It wanted that guy in the back. No, I tried to cover them, but there's nothing I could do. Even the mask guy in the back, it latched onto. Come on, come on. You gotta be kidding me. Fuji X-T4, what is your problem? The X-H2S did none of this. <laughs> so it's definitely better. Oh boy, that's embarrassing. Very interesting, food. Yeah, there better be 3D pop on this lens, by the way. 
and you better be able to hear me even though my lav mic's pointed way off to the side. Can you? This is not very flattering lighting, by the way. All the top down make me look like I'm 97 years old. I'm not loving that. Focus on them. It's got his head. It's got the back of his head. It went on that first. It's still on that. There's a box around that. Face detecting box. What's even there? Nothing. Fuji, why do you do this to me? Oh, boy. Oh, that is a problem. Oh, this is a problematic. What if I go in that area? Yeah. What was so interesting over there? It's just balloons. It's just balloons, Fuji. It's not your birthday. Relax. Okay. I'm making a scene. I'll leave the store. Not yet. Okay. All right, pro res. How was that to edit? I'd like to do a slow motion run through the shop. I might try that. I've been filming in H.265, 720 megabits per second, like the highest. There's no way I can edit those files. These better be smoother. All right, let's run through the shop slowly. Okay, then I got the bright idea to look out the window and see if I could see any birds for some animal eye tracking and I actually got some. First I saw a dog. So we're on the XH2S 150 to 600 at 600 and it was latching. It was latching onto that dog. It seemed to pick it quite nicely. Head box and I don't know, there's almost everything is in focus. It's not the best, because he's like right against the ground. It was a terrible angle. I'm on like the third floor or something, but it gave me hope. There was some hope that Fuji might actually work with this animal tracking stuff. Some pigeons flew by and I was like, yep, yep, it's doing it. It latched onto them. So like it was tracking them in the sky. Not bad, it's a terrible shot, but Fuji got the shot and I don't mind that. See you later, birdies. So, so far, even though this like firmware is very glitchy, it was doing something some of the time. I don't know about that one, not that one at all. Now this one, it just was not getting this pigeon. I don't know why I switched into just an area box around him. So it's just this box right around that pigeon. There's nothing else in the scene. I don't know what it was focused on. Like literally nothing in this shot is in focus. And then he leaped. He leaped for mankind. And Fuji considered tracking him briefly right there at the end. That was nice. This was an interesting situation. Another bird came and I had the box on the middle bird and then it tracked the one outside the box to the left. And then at some point it switched to the pigeon on the right to track him and completely ignored the one in my box in the middle and the footage shows that none of them are ever in. So I'm not sure what we're looking at here, Fuj, but some tweaks are needed. I literally have three hours of this pigeon family on a railing and here I am zooming in. I started at 150 to 600 where all this is all 4K 120p with animal tracking on and we just go, we go for the glory shot. I was hoping they would fly away and will they? You'll have to stay tuned to the end of the video. <laughs> oh, they don't. They just sit there forever. Here's a little daredevil. Oh, he's walking. He's walking a tight, tight rope there. Oh, 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 whoa, the drama. Oh, the pigeon drama. Is any of it in focus? I, I'm not 100% on that. And in the final shot, the worst attempt. I don't know, it's just so bad. 
through a window 50 miles away from me. 900 mil equivalent, 4K 120p. Not a damn thing in focus. Can we track it? We're trying. Move to the right and down. There you go. No, keep going. Oh, I suck at my job. Oh boy, do I. Fuji medium format, by the way. It better have latched on to me. The GFX, not, not the good one. The 50S or something, S2. The cinema's ours. Oh man, is it ever ours. We're on the 30 mil 3.5, by the way. Yes, you can vlog with medium format, and I think you should. Anything less is uncivilized. How's the stabe? Is it good? Am I... Don't bother him at work? Is he working hard or hardly working? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm gonna buy one. You could do the GFX 100S. Total vlogging, that's easy. He doesn't have the 23 mil. That's the one I wanted. Huh? Not bad. Oh, don't kill him. Do you want to star in my show, sir? I'm gonna go. So I'm just gonna be blunt. The XH2S, I'm surprised it was allowed to be given to YouTubers in its current state. It needs some tweaks. It felt very glitchy, almost worse than my X-T4 in a lot of ways. Just very jerky IBIS. Autofocus was uh, iffy at best, but better than the X-T4, like there's hope. But you have to hope that these firmwares are coming to fix it, because it's not here now. We just have to trust in the Fuji way of life that they might polish their shoes one day and we can walk a mile in them. In its current state, there's no way in hell I would upgrade from the X-T4 just because the 240p is so much worse. I don't get how that happened, but if there's firmware tweaks, I like the idea that we get 4K 120p, the F-Log 2 looked beautiful. There's a lot of different codecs I didn't get to try. Maybe a 420 would have been easier on the edit machine because these are hard chugging files. The manual focus ring on the 150 to 600 seemed more sensitive and I like that. It was easier to track something. I think that's an improvement. Thank you Vistec, by the way, for letting me try out the XH2S. I don't know, I'm gonna wait a little bit, let these firmwares roll in off the shelf and see if that fixes some stuff. But I do have a Fuji pen now. and does that write smoothly. Even that, I don't love. It's okay. So what do you think? Did the X-H2S outperform the Fuji in my terrible indoor fluorescent lighting flicker test? I'm gonna go. Thank you for buying a Fuji Assassin t-shirt. And something through Vistec to compensate them for me wasting all their time. I love you, Fuji. Send me more gear to review. Finished gear. I'll do a good justice.